Coming up, the Iowa Hawkeyes faced another tough loss this Saturday. And later, there may not have been fans at the weekend's game, but Kinnick stands were not empty. Welcome to DITV Now, your flash update on all the biggest headlines coming out of the Daily Iowa Newsroom. I'm your host, Elizabeth Neruda. And I'm Mallory Wilson. Over the weekend, the Iowa Hawkeyes hosted Northwestern for their first home game of the season. Iowa got off to a strong start, but the game didn't end the way fans wanted it to. DITV Sports Director Kate Overton breaks down the game. Hawkeye football was back inside Kinnick for the first time in almost a year, and the cardboard fans were excited. Early in the game, after a Wildcat muffed punt, Spencer Peters finds Brandon Smith in the corner of the end zone to give the Hawkeyes an early lead. The defense had it working early too. It was led by Davian Nixon, who dominated nearly the entire game. This gave the Hawkeyes good field position, and Tyler Goodson runs it in for the score. However, this would be the last touchdown for the Hawkeyes, and things would start to turn. After being down 17 to nothing, the Wildcats would turn it on as Kyrick McGown would get the handoff in the first touchdown for the Wildcats. And the Wildcats would strike again, this time Jesse Brown taking it in, making it a 17 to 14 ball game. This time the Hawkeyes are down and need a score to stay in the game. When the ball is intercepted by the Wildcats, and that would pretty much seal it as Northwestern wins 21 to 20. I mean, it's very frustrating. Um, but, you know, credit to Northwestern. You know, they had a really, really solid, solid half, and they played well. Um, so, you know, it's part of football, man. It's just, you know, very competitive, and uh, wish we could have done more. But credit to Northwestern. Did a lot of good things in the first half, and then you know, the second half was a whole different story. So, you got to play the full 60 minutes. And at the end of the game, really all the critical areas run the football, third down conversions, um, you know, and the turnover rate, obviously uh, those things are going to be, be important to decide in any football game. The loss wasn't the team's only bad news. Early Sunday morning, starting wide receiver Amir Smith-Marset was arrested on OWI charges. He was caught doing 74 miles an hour in a 30 mile per hour zone, all while blowing a .13 on the blood alcohol test. The legal limit in Iowa is .08%. Smith-Marset has already been suspended for this Saturday's game against Michigan State, and future games are to be determined. We will hear more from Coach Ferentz during his availability on Wednesday. The Hawkeyes had their first home game on Saturday. Even though the Big Ten announced that no fans were allowed in the stadium, the stands were not empty. DITV news reporter Katie Wadman has the story. After a delay in their season, the Hawkeyes finally had their first home game this past Saturday at Kinnick Stadium. Sadly, due to COVID-19, the Big Ten announced no fans were allowed in the stadium. But the stadium isn't completely empty. Due to COVID-19 cases, the Big Ten announced that no fans outside of family would be allowed in the stadium. This would then result into an empty stadium. But that isn't the case. The players will be seeing their families in the stands along with cardboard cutouts that Hawkeye fans sent in. The idea was something that you saw like a lot of sports games now doing because, you know, with everything going on and obviously football especially is huge in Iowa. The UI Dance Marathon partnered with the University of Iowa Athletics in a fan cutout fundraiser. Probably the big thing is the wave because that's so, you know, impactful is that you get people that are waving to the hospital. And so I think, you know, it was going to be hard for people to feel connected this year without being able to go to Kinnick and, you know, have that experience of going to tailgates and like having parties with your friends while sharing the game. And so it was like, oh, well, like we can pay for this to be at Kinnick with these cardboard cutouts. Fans who want to participate can send in their photos and will be able to see their face in the stadium on game day. The profits will then go to UI Dance Marathon and to the UI Stead Family Children's Hospital. Not only in Dance Marathon, like getting some support from that, but also it still gives the, the kids a chance to look out the window and still see like some familiar faces or some new faces out there. And it definitely probably still gives like the players maybe a little more feel that there might be some fans in there instead of just it being empty all the time. This makes fans feel included during the game day experience and allows kids in the hospital to see a full stadium. Reporting at Kinnick Stadium, Katie Wadman, DITV News. People gathered at the Dubuque Airport on Sunday to watch President Trump speak. This was the president's second visit to Iowa in the past few weeks. 
Senator Joni Ernst and Governor Kim Reynolds both spoke at the event. President Trump was skeptical about early voting and implied the Democrats were using it to try to rig the election. Nearly one million Iowans have already voted. In October 31st, Des Moines Register poll showed Trump leading Biden 48% to 41%, but the race has been close in Iowa since election season began. In Iowa City's Oakland Cemetery, a black angel towers above the graves. Local legend says it has the power to curse its visitors. Others say it's just a beautiful grave. DITV reporter Oliver Wilhelm gets to the bottom of this urban legend. Standing right at the heart of the cemetery, the black angel is immediately noticeable. It was erected in 1913 by Teresa Feldevert in memory of her deceased husband and son who had died at only 18. Shortly after, it turned black. Local legends explain it turning black due to Teresa's infidelity, or possibly the result of black magic. But what really makes this monument unique are the curses. If you're underneath it at, right at midnight, that's when that's how you get cursed. If you, if you kiss somebody underneath it, that person will die within seven years. Or if you if you actually kiss the black angel itself, you'll you'll die within six months. And you know there's. There's all sorts of those, and then the only way to survive one of those things is if you're a virgin. Cemetery supervisor Russ Buffington had similar stories. You know, I had a, a couple stop by and asked how to re, uh, how to reverse the curse of the black angel. She said her and her husband kiss kiss the feet. A couple of years after that, they both had terrible health problems, and, and you know they went out and apologized. So <laughs> there's all kinds of stories, and they just keep keep going. Halloween may be over, but that doesn't mean the scares have to stop. Oakland Cemetery's The Black Angel is a unique grave to visit, no matter the month. But, you know, keep in mind, it is a, it is a cemetery, and, and be respectful of, of not only that statue and, and monument, but, but everything else around you, too. Whether you want to visit her or not, she'll be waiting. From Oakland Cemetery in Iowa City, this is Oliver Wilhelm, DITV News. It's been a little chilly recently, but you can expect some warmer temperatures coming into this week. Today will be sunny with a high of 57 and low of 34. Perfect weather to walk to the polls. Thanks for tuning in to DITV Now. We'll be back tomorrow with all the latest from the University of Iowa, Iowa City, and Hawkeye Nation. From Iowa City, I'm Elizabeth Neruda. And I'm Mallory Wilson. Have a great day.